Act three, bitches! Yes, it's act three. The shocking finale of the Pope on film. Finally, all your questions will be answered. Who will live? Who will die? What is this rash on my inner knee? Should I go to the doctor? It itches. It feels like some sort of poison ivy, but also it's not like I'm just hanging out in the woods, you know? Yeah. There's no there's no way that I would get the poison ivy. Like, it burns, too. Like, I don't even know what to do. You, you know what? I'm just going to bing it. I'm just going to Google it, WebMD, and yeah. uh, keyboard click in parentheses, and... Well, okay. WebMD says Black Plague. I have the Black Plague. You have the Black Plague. Boy, that escalated <laughs> quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. It, it did. went up a notch. It did, didn't it? Yeah, I stabbed a man in the heart. Just to watch him and die. That, and so with that firmly out of the way, it's time to discuss this week's movie, the 2008 Wachowski CGI masturbatory fantasy film known as Speed Racer. Yes. And oh my God, people love this fucking movie. I loved it. I loved it. I fucking loved it. I'm going to have to fight you on this one. People love this movie. I had no idea the cult really? behind this movie. Yeah, no, I have no the, idea about that. There, There's a fandom of people who just adore this film and said that it, they say that it failed in the box office because it was ahead of its time. You know, it, it was too advanced for, for people in 2008. And... Like, sure, there might be something there. Personally, I attribute the the failure of this film to two things. Yeah. Number one, um, we aren't one hundred percent ready yet for all CGI films or CGI heavy films that aren't yeah. action that are like a non transformerian. Like, when I think of Speed Racer, I also think of, like, Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. Uh, another movie I absolutely love. I love and uh, and Scott Pilgrim versus the World. That's another heavy one, but that yes. one's a bit more subtle and jokey video gamey in its use. And, and just whenever one of these movies come out that's just heavy sci-fi, you know, unless it's a freaking Star Wars movie, people are just not ready for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. In fact, I felt I felt so bad for anyone who had to drive a car in this movie. Mm -hmm. Because I remember seeing the blooper reel in the, the second Star Wars prequel. Yeah. Which one was that? Uh, uh, not Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. I remember seeing that the blooper reel and, and fucking George Lucas is making what's her name Natalie Portman you know she's acting out that scene where they're at the whatever droid factory yeah the lava filled droid factory and she has to okay now roll under that and then, then you need to jump over this now this is going to be coming at your head and you're going to have to duck this and then go under there and she just loses it and she's like this is just a prank right you're just pranking me <laughs> this is all fake you're just it's just an elaborate joke right like, like this is ridiculous, and George Lucas is just, oh, no, it'll look great in post, but it's like, but still, she's just in this giant CGI warehouse pretending yeah. that things are dangerous. <laughs> so I just felt bad for all of the people who had to drive in this movie, because they're just in, like, a half-built CGI fake car pretending yeah. that everything is scary and thrilling. That's got to be so difficult. You know, a lot of the Avengers movies are like that too. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be so difficult. I just, you see a close up of somebody. I saw a close up of somebody driving in this film, and every time I just went, "Oh, bless your heart," <laughs> pretending like this is thrilling and scary. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's that's got to be tough. I don't think I could do that. I'd be laughing. I'd be laughing my ass off because I thought it was so funny. Yeah. So, so number one, I just don't think that people are ready yet for such a heavy CGI film. Um, number one. And number two, a lot of the failure is just, I got to say, is the fault of the Wachowskis. Uh, How so? Let me let, let me try and explain. Uh, yeah, let me try and explain why. They got too big too fast. True, very true. I, I mean, I mean, a, a large, in my mind, a major reason why people didn't make this film a blockbuster was it was a Wachowski film after The Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> the Matrix was just so big and so culturally defining and culturally redefining, and it changed how people use special effects, changed special effects, it changed so much. It, it, it's 2018, and people are still trying to copy The Matrix. Yeah. I'm looking at you, Underworld series. <laughs> You may have fooled everybody else, Kate Beckinsale, but you're not fooling me. Uh huh. Let's do the Matrix, but with vampires. Okay. Oh. The Matrix. I don't know. The Matrix. The Matrix is yeah. just so sad. So sad. I mean, it had such potential. I love the first Matrix film. It's yes. so good. It's such a good film. Uh -huh. It's so. It's such a wonderful, rich world, yeah. and it, 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 it's amazing, and it's well-written, and it's just the best. The second and third film I only saw once, and that was in the theater the day that they came out, and I never saw them again because it was such a fucking letdown. I watch them when I need a good cry, you know? Yeah. I'll, I'll put yeah. on the other two Matrix movies. And especially the yeah. second Matrix movie, because I liked the second Matrix movie a lot, because it was building off of this, off of the first, and and the mythology. I I liked Colonel Sanders, you know, but then the third just yeah. really fucked everything up. Mm -hmm. And it was like, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, I can accept that Matrix can that that. Neo can do anything he wants in the Matrix. That's fine. He yeah. cannot do... Out in the real world, he's just Keanu Reeves. Yeah. You know? What the fuck is this? He's got psychic powers in the real world now? Because he's yeah. Neo? Yeah. Anyway, that was it. it but Speed Racer, no. I'm yeah. going to have to wrestle you to the death. This movie was, you really have to be a Speed Racer fan. Now, the first time I saw it was pretty much when it came out, because I was like, Speed Racer. I, I yeah. loved Speed Racer as a kid. But I did go into the movie wanting to hate it, okay? And it wasn't for, like, a few days after. You know, like, sometimes you just dwell on a movie, you know? Yeah. I, I, I yeah. was like, no, that, that was perfect. That was that was perfect. That was exactly what it should be. And when I watched it this time, I was totally. We had just gotten back from getting the joints, uh, and, yeah. and I, I totally geeked out. This this movie is like <clears throat> so perfect. The Speed Racer, you know, they really hit the tone and the feel, and even the that... races. You know, even the races. That's, that's the key. That's the key, what you're saying right there. Because at first I'm like, okay, this film is cheesy and it's kind of badly written yeah. and the characters are dimensional. And, and, and this is like kind of bad. But then I realized, oh, wait a second. I watched a shit ton of Speed Racer and that cartoon was kind of shitty. Yeah. But it was fun to watch this shitty cartoon. So then I thought, well, if you have really seen the original Speed Racer cartoons, okay, this is kind of perfect. Yeah. 
this is a perfect adaptation. Uh huh. Yes. It's, yes. It's exactly. Easy and unrealistic, and none of these things could happen in real life. And that was Speed Racer. E- even when I was like, "Holy shit!" They've done. They they have two racer X's. That's 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 perfect. Yes. They have his brother Rex Racer, who in one shot, in one shot, he looked almost exactly like Tom Cruise. In the library. But, yeah. But in no other shot. <laughs> Well, I liked this film because I have a sexual fetish where I get off on rich businessmen eating pancakes. Yes. <laughs> and so I really got off on the pancake scene. Oh, yeah, let's. This is an action film about racing, but let's spend a good five minutes discussing pancakes. Yeah. Yeah, let's spend let's let's have a five minute pancake scene and really get down into the details of pancakes in this car racing film. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I uh, no, I, I I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. I, I, and he was I, he was Louis Prothero from V from Vendetta, and Racer X was Jack from Lost. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck? Because I had to look him up because like I was just looking at his chin and I'm like, first, okay, that doesn't look like the other guy. And that chin looks yeah. familiar. <laughs> the so, thing that I will I did geek out in one scene. Yeah. Because when I was little I was I was a pain in the ass, and my parents wanted to s- spend less time with me. Did you have a monkey? No, I had a combination TV VHS player. Yeah, that they got me when I was like seven or eight that I could have in my room. So, and they what they said was, now you can watch TV and watch cartoons and watch videotapes in your room. Isn't that great? But then the subtext was, we will get to see less of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's great for us. So I would just watch whatever I could. And and I was in my room, so my parents didn't care what I was doing. So so it would be like, okay, I have school in the morning. I have to be up at 6 a.m. But they are showing an hour of Johnny Carson's comedy classics at midnight. Yeah. I'm going to have to stay up and watch that. I'm a big Karnak fan. Yes. It's painful to me. In a mayonnaise to jar te- on Funkin' Wagner, Wagner's porch since noon today. Yeah, it's painful to me to say these stories out loud and realize that Bella is me. Yeah. What? It's painful to me to to, to have... It, it's shocking to me that I haven't made this connection up until now. Yeah. That it's like, okay, okay, so I have school in the morning, but they are showing Psycho at 11 p.m. Yeah. on Channel 45. I am going to have to stay up and watch that. <laughs> so I'm going to bed at like midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And my parents, and my parents are just, my parents just don't care. Yeah. They're not angry at me. My parents aren't angry at me like good parents would be. Yeah. Good parents would care, but my parents just didn't give a crap, so I just kept doing it. Uh but I would like I would wake up early on sat on Sundays cuz on Sundays is when like the the UHF stations would go, "Okay, we got nothing, guys." Because yeah. it's a Sunday, no one's watching TV. So let's just throw out whatever shit we can. So like at 5 a.m. they would show an hour of the Cisco Kid. Oh God, I I I, I could not get into the Cisco Kid. Yeah, and then and then the and prints then are that, awful. That was the yeah. biggest thing. It was like they were so horribly preserved. If you could, or yeah. was that an oxymoron? That they they're painful to watch. Yeah, and then they show, 
And then they'd show the classic Lone Ranger and then the many lives of Dobie Gillis, which yeah. I would watch constantly because I just couldn't believe that Gilligan did something else. Yeah. Yeah. And I would just watch this show and go, he's so good as Maynard G. Krebs. Why do we just know him as Gilligan? This is equally as good. He's He was the first Shaggy. Yes, he was. How are we not all obsessed with this as a nation? We should at least be obsessed with Maynard G. Krebs as we are obsessed with Gilligan. This is amazing. Yes. I, I I am in total agreement. And then after that, they would start showing cartoons, but it would be the bizarre cartoons that a cheap-ass UHF station could afford. So they would show, like, Gigantor and Speed Racer. Or Bat Fink. Or yeah. possibly... Courageous Cat and Minute Mouse. And, uh, and, uh, as a child, I watched a lot of Davy and Goliath. Yes. A lot of Davy and Goliath. But I would watch, I would watch, I would only occasionally watch Speed Racer. I wouldn't watch it a lot, but then sometimes I would go, okay, I, I'm kind of bored. Isn't Speed Racer on right now? I'm going to put Speed Racer on and then. Suddenly, Speed Racer looks at this massive vehicle. Yeah. Wow, that is a giant car. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And it would be that episode where there's the giant car. Uh huh. And it's a car, but it's also the size of like a train. But it goes as fast as the other vehicles. But the giant car is actually like secretly the home of like this mob group. Yeah. And I'd go, oh, the giant car, that's pretty awesome. Uh, okay, I'm not going to watch. So I would watch that episode. And then like a month later, I would go, you know what? I haven't watched Speed Racer for a while. I'm going to watch Speed Racer again. Uh -huh. Suddenly, Speed Racer was face-to-face -face with a mammoth vehicle. Oh, that looks like a giant car. <laughs> oh. And I'm like, do they only have one fucking episode of Speed Racer? Because I swear <laughs> to God. I've seen the Mammoth Car episode like 40 fucking times. Yeah. What is with the goddamn Mammoth Car? <laughs> so so when I went to watch the Speed Racer movie, I'm like, okay, I know Speed Racer and Trixie and Chim Chim and yeah. Pops and all that. Um, and, and Racer X. And Racer X, which is al has always been the coolest character. I have a, a, yeah. a general understanding of Speed Racer, but I will say this. There better be a mammoth fucking car. <laughs> if there's not a mammoth car, I'm gonna riot. And there yeah. was the mammoth car, and I geeked out when I saw it. <laughs> and there's all cheesy mafia guys, and they're beating up the Japanese guy, and it looks like they're in like a nice, spacious living room. Yeah. But then you realize that they're in this giant, massive truck, and I'm like, holy shit, that's the mammoth car! Yes. They're they're in the only episode of Speed Racer that exists. <laughs> <laughs> and I I I straight up geeked out over that scene. But it was like it was like perfectly cast. You know? Although it was a little it was a little creepy being yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Because uh, I'm on the Christina I, Ricci thing, too. I had a really hard time with Christina Ricci's character because it's like you're not doing anything. You're not saying anything. You're you're nothing. You're just this, like, cardboard, wooden fucking thing that just stands up there, and you're not emoting, and you have nothing to do. You are doing nothing in this film. Why are you even here? You're barely acting. But yeah. then every time I had a problem with the movie Speed Racer, I had to put it in perspective and i'm like oh god christina ricci i used to love you so much and now i just hate you and i want to strangle you what is wrong with you but then it's like wait in the anime trixie has nothing to do she is just the pretty eye candy woman yeah love interest and that's it they, she has nothing to do in that sense when you when you really put the source material into perspective okay christina ricci is perfect yes Yes, but I, I, the problem I, I, I had. Her. She's perfect. The problem I had is, I, I, I thought Speed Racer was great. Okay, he was a he was just a very good looking kid, you know. 
Like yeah. he's he's not fully grown up yet, and that shows, you know. So I thought yeah. he was great. Yeah. And Christina Ricci looked great because with the eyes that she's always had, she was born for fucking anime, you know. Yeah. But then when they would start getting romantic, I would be like, okay, wait a second. Exactly how old is Christina Ricci now? Yeah, yeah, I was kind of doing some math there as well. Because she Ricci had supposed to be 18 in this movie. Yeah. She had to have been like at she's... least 30. Yeah. 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 So so yeah, no, I had a I had a hard time I had a hard time with that. Um but anyway, the Matrix was so big that anything that comes after the Matrix is destined to not be as successful. Yeah. Because people are seeing the any other Wachowski movie through they're seeing it through a Matrix filter. You yeah. Know? I I sat down Emerald and I said, Emerald, you have to see the Matrix. It's an amazing film. You gotta watch this. So I sat her down and she watched the Matrix and she's like, Wow, that's great. Are there any more? And I just went, Nah. We don't talk about those. <laughs> yeah. Just, just you don't want any more. You think you do, but you don't. Just just let it be. You know. <laughs> Just let it be. So Sometimes you just stacks. gotta push back from the table, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I I was before stats, I was geeking out through through this whole fucking movie. Through the whole movie, yeah. I was like, that's Razor X's car. That's Razor X's car. That was even before we saw Racer X. And it was like, oh, yeah. Racer X, and then Spritel and Chim Chim showed up. I was like, like yeah, Spritel is like is like the pre Danny Bonaducci. Why not? You might be wearing a mask. Oh, what? I'm sorry. What was that? Spritel was like the pre Danny Bonaducci. <laughs> He okay. and that's yeah. how he was. He was like just like a little con man. He was never he he never did what he was told. And and he had the monkey, which was almost like his brother. Yeah. So that was perfect. Hey. And 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 hey. what? No, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. You keep going. And when they and when they finally completely tricked out the Mach 5, it was like, okay, okay, here we go. We got the blades on yeah, the front, I, and we got the jumpy things. Yeah. Yeah, when I first started watching the movie, I, I thought, okay, uh, when he's driving, he's not going to have the buttons that do all the stupid things, right? Yeah. Like, this is, this is a semi-realistic like racing thing, he's not going to be like jumping in the air. But then that became the entire film. Yeah. By the time, yeah, by the time they tricked out the car, I'm like, oh, it's all the stupid things. They're adding the stupid things. Yeah. Uh huh. I was so happy. I at first I didn't like the guy who was Speed Racer because it's like, oh, he's really pretty and he looks like Speed Racer, but also like he can barely act and he's just not. He's. I just don't find him that charismatic. But then again, source material. Yeah. I always hated Speed Racer. <laughs> the one and, thing... and that it's so so like you put it into perspective, and I'm like, oh my god, I would watch Speed Racer for Racer X. Yeah. Oh yeah. I never watched Speed Racer for Speed Racer. So in that sense, oh, they picked the perfect person. He was pretty, and he can act a bit, and that's all you need for Speed Racer. Yeah, Racer, Racer X. X was important, and it, I fucking love that guy. Racer X was the shit. He was just the shit. And he was the, the Dewey Six Machina of the whole fucking cartoon. You know? Yeah. Speed would get into yeah. shit, and if need be, Racer X would pull his ass out. Yeah. You know? And, and it yeah. always ended with a goofy race. Yeah. yeah. You know? And, and yeah, he was always going to the different countries to race in and all of that. And like, 
I really think they nailed this movie. I, I, I would love a sequel. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. No. Because of the stats. Before we get to the stats, um, I I am not qualified to have this conversation, but did you ever get into Sense8? Uh, a little. A little? Yeah, Jeannie was watching it a little while, and I was watching it a little. Um, that's that Wachowski TV show where they are all, like, bound together somehow by a mystical lost kind of force. Yeah, called fucking. Yeah? Was yeah. that it? They had all fucked, and then that that gave them all the shining. Really? Like, I, I'm not sure. I've only watched very small bits and pieces of it. I, that's why I said I'm not qualified to have this conversation, <laughs> but apparently... <laughs> but that's gonna be that's gonna be a chapter in my autobiography. They fucked and got powers. Okay, chapter but wait a 24. second. But wait a second. Doesn't that make the whole series actually an advertisement with the tagline of "We're the Wachowskis"? Come fuck us. Yeah. Fuck yeah, us, and you will get magical powers. I love this show. Yeah. So, okay, anyway, Natasha Natasha was obsessed with Sense8. Yeah. Yeah, still dealing with that loss. <laughs> um, so let's do some stats. I'm really proud of these stats. Um, let's stat this shit up. Speed Racer 2008 film by the Wachowskis at the time I was actually I, I thought for sure that when they when they got around to doing Speed Racer that one of them was a woman I was surprised to still see uh, directed by the Wachowski brothers I was surprised to see that yeah I, I thought Lana was already Lana yeah yeah, that's what I thought too. But never, never name yourself. Okay, no, no, I got to stop there for a second. Never name yourself Lana. Don't do it. If you have the choice, if your parents do it, you're stuck with it and they're evil fucks. Okay? But if you have a choice of the name, never, never Lana. Don't go through your life with your first name spelled backwards as anal. Don't do it. I just have, I just want to say, and I hope, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this isn't, I'm pretty sure this isn't going to be offensive to the transgendered community. Okay. But what upsets me is that your name is Larry, but then you decide to live your life as a woman. So what should your new name be? You you have your choice of names. Yeah. Why choose one based on your original name? Just hey, whatever you could be called. You could be called Alessandra. Yeah. Your your name was Larry. Now your name is Lana. That upsets me. I, I like think... like if I, like if I became like if I became if I decided to live my life as a female, my name now is Steve. I'm not going to call myself Stevania. Right. Right. But this, I think, is documented evidence that we are both progressives. Okay. We're not. We're not upset that that she's transgender. We're upset at her fucking yeah. name choice. <laughs> that bitch. I, I, I'm just, a, I'm, I am upset. I'm pretty sure this isn't offensive to the LGBTQ community. It's just, if you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to change your name, don't fucking, you have your choice. There's no rules. Right. It's okay. It's okay. I I understand. I really understand how hard it is to be a transgendered person in our society. 
Yes. But choosing your own name, that's one of the small perks. Okay. Yeah. You guys are talking about Oh, my new name is going to be Alice Stain. We should yeah. watch a movie called My Life as a Zucchini. It's not going to I'm don't don't pick a new name based on your old name. That, that, that but, just that's weak sauce. Yeah. But I think there may be a downside to this. Okay. Yeah. There may be a downside. Uh, there might be like a lot of Cleopatras and Helens and. Those are the only two historic women I can think of. <laughs> nice. Which is its own statement. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, Speed Racer cost a hundred and twenty million dollars to make, and that's not including advertising. And they advertise the shit out of this. It made only ninety three million dollars in the box office, so that's a big loss. Uh huh. Now, originally, I was going. I, I originally, I was not going to discuss the history of Speed Racer in Japan and how it originated. I wasn't going to do that because I, I feel that that's already a popular story that a lot of people know, and so I wasn't going to do it. Yeah. Everybody already knows how Speed Racer originated. I can't add anything new to that. But then I said, okay, if someone's listening to this episode and they're a Speed Racer fan, then I owe it to them to tell the story. Uh So so here is, as everyone knows, the origins of Speed Racer. Yes. Speed Racer originally started as a popular Japanese manga that was originally called Anal Fucking Tentacle Rape. Uh Uh-huh. But then they, it was changed, see? It was changed because it was believed that by making anal fucking tentacle rape more family-friendly, then it would improve sales. Yeah. So they changed it from anal fucking tentacle rape. They changed it into happy panda horny cum explosion. Ah. Uh, which... That is a bit more kid-friendly. Yeah, it, it is a bit more family friendly with the addition of the Happy Panda. Yeah. So then it went through a number of different versions. A number of different versions came and went, including but not limited to Super Sunny Schoolgirl Scat, <laughs> Kitty Cat's Pee Parade, Rainbow Friendship Butt Plug Orgy, and oddly enough, Ernest I Goes to Camp. I watched that fucking movie for you. Diana, that is time of my life. I can never get Sorry, back. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> That's why they come back to me. What movie? <laughs> Watch that fucking Oakja. film. Oakja. Oakja, have fun. Oakja. Freaking horrible. I've never seen it. Time of my life, I can't get back. And my eyes, I need to reach them. It's it's vegan propaganda. Don't don't believe the hype. So, until finally they said, you know what? What if we get anal fucking tentacle rape and just make it about a naive little uh, shit who can drive good? And boom. Yeah. Uh-huh. That. That is how babies are made. I mean, sorry. <laughs> that is the story of Speed Racer. It was a manga, and then it was an anime that actually didn't last that long. No, no, it was there on, aren't. Like, a blip. Yeah, but it kept reoccurring throughout my life. Yeah, because it was like, a Japanese literally. show that was cheap. It was a Japanese show that was easy to dub, and then it was cheap for TV stations to just throw on. Yeah. Like, oh, we need something for kids. Here's the cheapest thing we can put on. It's called Speed Racer. Have and, fun. And I would be like, so, oh, shit, they got Speed Racer. I love Speed Racer. I'm going to watch Speed Racer. Oh, oh, all the way up to then it's on MTV. And I watch Speed So now I'm, I'm the what? I'm in my 20s-ish? watching MTV for Speed Racer. And then they make a fucking movie. 
Yeah. Yeah. But, but, so in the 70s and 80s, you could catch the cartoon, you know, on a UHF station, but because the, it, it was cheap to put on. Then Speed Racer sort of disappeared, and it was a novelty retro thing that not too many people cared about. Yeah. In the 90s, it came back in a big way. Speed Racer came back. Yeah. How, you might ask? Why, you might ask? Well, Bunny, I'm serious about this. This is a scoop. You will not read the following in fucking Wikipedia. Okay. Okay. In fact, I went looking for this, and I could I, I could barely find any... I couldn't... I could barely find any proof of of this story's existence. Yeah. But I did find a few tiny articles I that that mentioned it. This is how Speed Racer came back in the 90s. Okay. Everyone has forgotten this. That's why I sent it to you today. In the oh. 90s, in 1992, a techno group called Alpha Team released a techno remix version of the Speed Racer theme song, and it played on the radio a fucking lot. Yeah. Did they play it at the end? No, 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 no. They did not. And let me explain why. Uh, Alpha Team released two versions of their remix. A clean version and a really fucking dirty version. Okay. Good plan. Good plan. Always have the clean version. The dirty version. So the dirty version got... um, tiny sound effects that speed and Trixie would do because it's an animated cartoon. So speed, you know, is driving and it's, it's scary. So he's doing all these noises like, Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Trixie. And then Trixie's making these noises cause she's like the worried damsel in distress. So she's going, Oh, Oh, speed. <laughs> oh no. Speed. Oh. So they got all of these. So this techno band gets all of these sound effects, these moans and grunts from the original cartoon, and they edit it together to simulate Speed and Trixie fucking. <laughs> and they put it at the end of the song. <laughs> and here's the crazy thing: 1992. I'm like a sophomore in high school. Yeah. It played on the radio all the time. The dirty version. Yeah? It played on the radio all the time. And I was blown away by this. This could easily be this could easily be like a like a Mandela effect moment yeah. in popular music. Because it would be playing all the time and I felt the same way I feel to this day when the radio plays a whole lot of love. <laughs> okay, yeah. Because at the end, he has an orgasm. <laughs> at the end of the song, he, he, he is that uncomfortable part for me where suddenly he's like, huh, huh, huh? And I'm like, God damn, you're having an orgasm on the radio. How is this okay? Uh, well, uh, well, Led Zeppelin's a whole lot of love. The yeah. same thing with this weird techno remix of fucking Speed Racer. They used Speed and Trixie's moans and groans, and they get faster and faster at the end of the song. And they even play, in the beginning, it's just a a, a simple techno remix of the Speed Racer theme song. And then the simulated sex happens at the end. But then they replay a clip of the theme song, and it really does take a different tone when they're simulating the sex. And suddenly they play... Here he comes, here comes Speed Racer. <laughs> it's a graphic fucking song. <laughs> and it played on the radio all the time so much that suddenly everyone in my high school suddenly knows all the lines to a 1960s Japanese anime that they've definitely never fucking seen before. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly, everyone knows the Speed Racer theme song, and then I'm, and then that I think that's one of the reasons why I never saw the movie Speed Racer, is because Speed Racer became big again in the '90s, and I'm like, you people have never fucking seen Speed Racer. Yeah. 
Where did you see Speed Racer? Suddenly the jocks are, are uh, you know, playing, uh, you know, having a big football game and singing the Speed Racer theme song. I'm like, yeah. fuck you. You don't even, you, you couldn't even spell anime, you know? <laughs> and suddenly you consider yourself a fan because you know the lyrics to Speed Racer. No, fuck all of you guys. I hate Speed Racer now out of principle. <laughs> So what happened was this song became so big on the radio that MTV, based solely on the popularity of this bizarre, erotic <laughs> Speed Racer techno yeah. song, said, you know what? Let's just start showing it. So on Saturday nights, MTV started showing Speed Racer. They would, uh -huh. show, an hour, they would show an hour of Speed Racer at night on the weekends. And suddenly, boom, Speed Racer has a comeback. Yeah. And after that, that's when you see, okay, uh, suddenly uh, Speed Racer shirts are in. Suddenly the, there's new Speed Racer toys. We're going to release a new Speed Racer cartoon. We're going to start releasing all these Speed Racer DVDs and these box sets. And that eventually led to this movie. I had heard something about another speed racer cartoon that was supposed to have been on um oh fuck what channel some channel that we didn't have in my fucking area okay remember remember okay. that where you didn't get certain channels in certain areas oh yeah oh, yeah. yeah so so i kind of like like my mind noted it forever but i've never looked into it any further yeah. Yeah. Uh, after this movie, they released a, a a new new Speed Racer cartoon, and it was like Speed Racer: The Next Generation. But but yeah, it's really shit. But well, that would have it's really interesting. Driving. Yeah, I'm not down with that. But it's really really no. Too, Is it? Spritel should I, only play with his monkey. But it's really interesting to me that this week's movie came into being as the result of a 90s techno song about Speed Racer having sex. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't believe if you don't believe me, I found the song on fucking YouTube. I sent it to you. I, I saw it just before showtime, so I didn't actually look at it. Yeah, give it a listen. Oh, they literally totally. have sex in this song. And it's I'll probably cut weird. it into and the it, show. Yeah, it played on the radio all the fucking time. Yeah. So bizarre. 1992. The Speed Racer Techno Sex Remix. Yeah. So, let's, I, I want to discuss this film a little bit more. This movie bombed at the box office, yeah. and afterwards it was seen as a bit of a joke. Speed Racer was a punchline for a while. Yes. But, oh my god, time has been real fucking good to this film. Just bing this movie. Just really? Just bing it. Speed, Speed Racer 2008. Here are some of the results that I got this morning. Uh, Hollywood Reporter a, a lengthy article entitled In Defense of Speed Racer. Uh, Gizmodo.com, quote, an unsung masterpiece. <laughs> Slate, Slate.com, one of the finest films of the last decade. Really? Tor.com, yeah, Tor.com, the science fiction uh, website, an overlooked masterpiece. CBR.com called the film much better than you remember. <laughs> the website Jalopnik called it way ahead of its time. And uh, a website that I found called lwiles.com called the film, quote, the greatest blockbuster of the 21st century. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Maybe let's not all go sucking this movie's dick just yet. Yeah, that, that's all going a little too far. Because really, one of the big things I have is 
fucking like two <laughs> hours and 20 minutes no yeah no, no I, not for a speed racer movie i mean i enjoyed it at all but it, but no it's speed racer get in get out i i would go 90 minutes yeah when i first it is so see so now I, with I those down, reviews i got to start looking to tear it down a bit <laughs> yeah no, when i sat down to watch the movie the first thing i said was bunny likes this film so i'm going to try and keep a positive attitude about this i always heard that speed racer was just a shit film <laughs> Like a like a really good bad movie, yeah. but I'm not gonna go down like that. I'm not going to automatically start hating this film. I haven't even seen it, so I'm gonna try and keep a positive mental attitude about this. Bunny likes it. I'm gonna give it a shot. So so I sat down, and and of course the first thing like, why are you two hours and twenty minutes? Why yeah. in the world is this so fucking long? It, this isn't the Godfather Part Two. It's fucking Speed Racer. We could have clipped a bit because we kind of had multiple bad guys, you know. And then also, and it, it, the the main problem I had with this film is what are the Wachowskis getting paid by the flashback? <laughs> That's a weird contract to have. Yeah, should really. Ch- your contract if you're getting paid by the flashback <laughs> but 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 honestly it like i i didn't like the film but then you know i had the light bulb moment like this is based on a ridiculously cheesy anime yeah so in relation to its source material no this is perfect and they this hit- is perfect and they hit the card. Okay. It's, oh, it's not so much a cheap anime when you're five. You know? Yeah. That's, when you're five, that's when, this is a gripping drama. Okay. That's, that's going to be, that's going to be my next step. Because I saw the film and I'm like, okay, this is pretty good and I like it. It's a visually stunning film. The visuals and the effects are amazing. But I have a hard time with the length and it's it, it, it's cardboard acting and, and a bit of the script. But something tells me yeah. that if I sit Maxwell down in front of this fucking movie, yeah. he's going to be pretending to be a race car driver for a good year or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that literally i it, that, that there's like a 75 percent chance that if i sit down and show maxwell this film that he's going to be running from room to room going <laughs> you you learned the in, you learned like the important stuff as a kid you didn't look at how goofy and stupid it was you know, yeah. so it was like it was like, ooh, speed! You really shouldn't make pops mad, you know, and darn that spritel, you know. Yeah, and I think they really nailed that. I, yeah, I, no, I, they I did. think I, I think like like they nailed the feel of Speed Racer that I had when I was five years old. Yeah. Speed Racer was cool as shit. And and that's something I never thought I would ever, ever say about Jack from Lost. <laughs> you know? Ever. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, uh, at, at first, I hated this film. But eventually, I'm like, no, no, this is, this is really good. This is a this is a, a a damn good This is the movie, yeah. you know? This is the cartoon. I mean, I they mean got, they, Yeah. They got the cartoon and they brought it to life in what has to be the most realistic way that they could. And they used they used the CG how CG is going to be used if you want it seen at all. You know? 
Yeah. Because a lot of yeah. C- a lot of shit has CG and it's it's so that you don't see shit. You know? But yeah. but if you're gonna if you're gonna have a movie that CG is one of the elements, they used it right. They used it to get these incredibly impossible races, you know? Things that yeah. could never ever happen in the real world, things that are really cartoony, and made it work. Yeah. No, like it, in. But it, it, I'll say this: it was, it was, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was it was damn it it was fun. I had a fun time with this. Um, uh, and I'll probably be watching it again with Maxwell. So yeah, like there are movies that we have seen on this podcast that were shit. Yes, and and this is not one of those films. I I had fun with this. Possibly for you, an airport movie. Maybe, maybe, yeah. You know, I'm not gonna go masterpiece or groundbreaking you know but for for what it needed to do it did it very well yeah no this isn't an airport movie for me but it's definitely like a kid movie for me this yeah. is a movie that i wouldn't see but i would see if maxwell or eleanor were, were watching it yeah yeah this is a kid movie I have, it, you know, it like uh, like Eleanor watching Inside Out, or uh, Maxwell was obsessed with uh, the Pixar movie A Bug's Life. Yeah. Uh, what movie was Bella obsessed with when she grew up? I don't know. Emerald was obsessed with Barbie's The Princess and the Popper, and that is a torture that I will not. Natalie was obsessed for a long time with. <laughs> Remade Astro Boy movie. Oh yeah, that remake Astro Boy movie. Uh, Bella might have been like I don't know, maybe nine. What movie was Bella like really obsessed with when she grew up? What movie did she really like? Like really, like take to. My camera had a number of films. Uh, nine. Because it was an really interesting movie. Okay, well, you weren't interested in movies? Okay, well, now you're a freak. Wow. I think that just disowned you. I, I didn't disown you. It was more of just, it, Mommy's 50% right. It was a diss. <laughs> but I didn't disown you. That's more of like, maybe, kind of, not 75, like, Eh, 45%, right? Yeah. Um, that's all I've got for this week's film. It, that's all it I got. surprised me. It surprised me. I'll say that. You, you should go back so, and watch a couple of episodes of the cartoon. That's yeah, no, I think I might. Here. That's what you should do from here, so you can see how the inspector looked spot on, except he was blonde. Yeah. Inspector Detector. Yes. Inspector name? Detector. Yeah. Yes. God, I love Emerald? that. Emerald. No, Emerald. Do, the do you do you still have like a what is it? Uh, Japanese anime site. Mm-hmm. See what, what's it called? Kiss anime. Kiss anime. Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll. Oh, Thank you. Jesus yeah. Christ. Crunchyroll. Yeah, Crunchy, still have Crunchyroll. Okay. Um, can you see if Speed Racer is on there? But it might be. Well, what was it originally called? Maki Go Go. Was that the Japanese name? I don't know. But it would. I think it was Maki Go Go. It's, but... it's on Hulu. Oh, it's on Hulu. Okay, never mind. It's on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Great, thank you. It's on Hulu. Okay. You're welcome. But 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 no, I like this movie. I like this movie. It, it it was pretty good. Yeah. But I'm super excited about I mean, next week. I mean, it's in its own category. Like, there's nothing you can really compare this movie to 
you know, oh, yeah, no, there's how good there's it no, is as a movie, you know. Yeah, it, it it's 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 an odd. It doesn't fit in a lot of places. It's a two and a. It's a two hour and twenty minute massive budgeted CGI spectacle, PG rated kids movie. Yeah, like <laughs> that doesn't exist. There are there are, there's nothing else that exists like that. Yeah, you know. It doesn't fit anywhere else. But let me tell you what I'm excited about, and that's next week. Because next week on the podcast... Okay. And uh, and uh, it should be up on the Cough Cough in, like, later tonight, because it's uploading right now. Uh, next week on the podcast, we are doing the original 70s... Jesus Christ Superstar. All right. All right. I'm I'm down. I'm down. Bella has been itching to do this. Yeah. Jesus Bella? Christ Superstar. You're doing that next week? Yes. Super excited. I, I remember when she was still a little Jesus freak. I remember that too. Bella? Yeah. 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 I remember when, when uh, both Emerald and Bella had a bit of Jesus freak in them. Yeah, Emerald would speak in tongues. It scared us. <laughs> Full of the spirit, of yeah. so much. <laughs> right so, now, she's speaking in tongues. So yes, I'm looking forward to it. So was it just a new musical or something like that? Because I've been hearing a little bit of talk about Jesus Superstar lately. Um, it, well, that's what we're going to be discussing because for East on Easter, they did yet another live musical on TV. Uh huh. And so it was a, it was a on NBC Easter evening and it was yeah. Jesus Christ Superstar live. And it was a live musical performance of the play. And I was really excited to see it because, um, number one, Catholics and some Christians hate Jesus Christ Superstar because yeah. it's the Bible from the point of view of Judas. Yeah. And they just do not like that. Terrible. They do not like that at all, number one. And number two, in the live version, John Legend plays Jesus. Yeah. So so it's like NBC is doing this blasphemous musical featuring a black Jesus. Awesome. Like, oh, we, this, we, we this should... couldn't be... This couldn't be any better. Like, 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 how could it be more offensive to the flyover states? Yeah. We we so, should yeah. we should do yeah, a Rocky so, Horror on them, though. I'm thinking. <laughs> we should do what? A Rocky Horror on them. Remember, we did Rocky Horror and the play. Yeah. No, we did both Rocky Horror and that bizarre live version yeah. the interesting thing about the jesus christ superstar live is that when you really think about it every time that they've done a live musical on tv they're doing it on a sound stage yeah so when they did hairspray live it was hairspray live in a sound stage without an audience when they did Grease Live, it was Grease Live in this soundstage without an audience. So Jesus Christ Superstar was the first ever live musical that they've done in the last 10 years where they said, crazy idea. What if we have an audience? Okay. Was it booing? So there was an audience. Yeah, so there was an audience. They did it at like a this giant massive festival and there was a shit ton of people and they were screaming and yelling and it's a different experience when you're watching one of these stupid live action musicals and there's an audience that likes the musical yeah it's always weird to see like one of these live musicals on tv and and then they finish a song and it's just silence yeah they're on a sound stage there's nobody there it's weird <laughs> But I have a lot to talk about in, in terms of Jesus Christ Superstar because I forced a huge group of people at the house to sort of watch it with me. Yeah. To watch the live action version with me. And yeah, uh, yeah so I have a lot to talk about next week. Not only that, not only are we doing Jesus Christ Superstar, but next week 
We're going to be talking about video games. We're going to be talking a lot more about Stan Lee, unfortunately. Yeah. Steve's historical approximations has to do with two things that you wouldn't think fit together, but they do. Okay. Next week's Steve historical approximations, or SHAP, as I like to force down everyone's throat, is going to be about Bambi and twisted hardcore pornography. All right. Very excited about that. And then, of course, for homework next week, don't forget Frankenstein meets the Space Monster, the one Frankenstein film that doesn't feature Frankenstein. Yes. Very excited to be watching this. It, it so was... that's next week. Next week is going to be. Next week is going to be a really, really good episode. But now that I look over this episode. Now that Steve looks over this episode, he is worried. He is worried that this episode has not been as good as it could have been. But now that he's here at the end of the episode, he decides to sell Buddy. I was trying to do like a Japanese anime thing. Who is secretly uh, Steve's brother. That makes me Racer X, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that Bunny might be my brother. Oh. <laughs> So now that I'm looking over this episode, I got to say, I think this has been a pretty good episode. I think this has been a damn good episode. I got a damn emerald. That means it was a good episode. Sometimes he'll say, I think this has been a pretty good episode. And although he doesn't say it, when he just says, I think this has been a pretty good episode, what he's saying is, the episode has been shit, and you should hang your head in shame. <laughs> and you have brought shame to your ancestors. But when he says, I think this has been a damn good episode. That's when he's saying, you shall sleep good tonight, Esteban. <laughs> it's, it, it's a little thing. And sometimes, like, uh, I'll be like, okay, you be good. Okay. Click. End conversation. He didn't give me a damn. <laughs> I can't believe he hated this episode. <laughs> I'm full of shame and regret. <laughs> I doubt my life choices. But this week got a damn because this was a damn good episode. Well, you, you, but you can't get a damn every week. I mean, that's impossible. A good episode is a good episode. I don't know why you hate me. <laughs> I don't know why you would hurt me like that. <laughs> but but this has been a damn good episode. I agree, is what I'm saying. I concur. I if, concur with your findings. If they're all damn good episodes, where do you go from there? I I'll explore that, okay? I'll explore where oh, yeah. where I can go from damn. Okay. Okay. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve, and on behalf of so many people. Uh, Natasha, Isabella, Eleanor, Maxwell, Emerald, Deanna, Destiny. I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do schwaffles and poopy tits. And cats. Can you say that with a bit more enthusiasm i feel like you just said that like it was just a turd that you were trying to pinch off can you say that with a kid because because you heard me and i'm like you godless heathens and i slam my fist on the table to to emphasize it a and then you come in with like a with like a with like a wet fart because like here i am and i'm like you godless heathens and you do schwaffles and poopy toots King Candy. <laughs> that was the voice I gave you. That was the voice I gave you for Wreck It Ralph. So can you? I just want you to do it again, <laughs> but 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 maybe with a bit more uh, razzmatazz. Gusto. Okay. Three, two, one, go. You you're making me forget my lines, bud. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll give you another countdown. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do the last couple of numbers silent, like they do, like on TV and radio. So so here you go. Five, four, three. You do swaffles and poopy tits. That was better. That was Welcome. better, but we're going to work on that, okay, every week. No. 
do 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 do